Welcome into the studio. Today I'm going to look at something quite, well, really very important actually. Tonal range and colour, how to match colour. Um, also take a little look at the colour wheel. It's really important to get these things quite accurate. And I'm going to share with you the tips that I picked up over the years. Now it doesn't matter whether you're doing oil painting, pastels, it really doesn't matter. These are the things you need to get right and you need to understand to be able to do an accurate representation of animals or humans or any subject. So let's start with the most important thing. That's the tonal range. So I'll go right back to basics. The tonal range is the range from the lightest light, so pure white, to the darkest dark, pure black. Okay, now these charts I've just done on um, my image editor. You can print these out, cut them out yourself, whether you want a large one or a middle sized one or a small one. If you want then, and you're doing oil paintings or acrylics, but some form of wet medium, you can laminate them. Okay, so you can paint directly on them and wipe them clean. They're really easy to make laminate and do yourself and then once you've laminated them you can pinch punch some holes in there so that's just with a paper punch I use it on the edge okay so I'm not uh, ruining other areas and we can make them like that that's for painting so you can do a smaller size or larger size to suit what you want okay so they're nice and easy if you want to to draw directly on them to match your tones. So if you're doing pastels, you could use pastels and actually draw on them. And I'll show you how to use that in a moment. Then obviously you don't want to laminate them, uh, but there, there is a better way to use them than that. Okay, so that's, that's what tonal range is in its most simplest form. And that's how you can use these little charts to help find it. Okay, so let's go a bit further than that. So, okay, let's have a look. Here's a, an image I printed out. And let's zoom in a bit more on this. Okay, so I've done loads of videos now showing about um, dragging out colors with a color picker. So let's not, let's not concern ourselves with that yet. I'll come back to that. Let's think instead about the tonal range. And we'll take one of these laminated ones a moment. So the tonal range from the lightest light to the darkest dark. So this area here might really look quite light, but when we put white by it, we can see that it's actually much darker than white. Okay, so the use and the purpose of the holes is to take away the distraction of the detail. And that's kind of what blur in the image does. If you see my other videos, you'll show me, uh, you'll see me blur in the image to take away the, all the tiny distractions of detail. So the blurring does it, but then to do it even further by just focusing and zooming in almost like a laser on one area that's what the dot does here, the parts we've cut out. It allows you to really concentrate on that area. So let's look at this area once again. So it looks really light. People can put it too light on a drawing or even too dark. Same with the painting. When we go like that, we can see that's what white looks like. Forget about the color. This is darker than white. So we can blur our eyes or blur the image even more and squint. And we can see that if we go to three, it looks lighter than three. If we go to four, you can see that four's darkness is much darker on the sheet than the, the hole, than the leopard. You can see if we go all the way up to seven, you can see then that obviously that fleshy color is much, much lighter than seven. So which one? is it and if we come down it's really close to two white it's darker than white and it's close to two so what's the point of all this well the lightness and the darkness the value 
the tonal value, okay, so it could be called any of those things, is what gives the subject shape and form. It's what makes it look three-dimensional on a flat surface. If everything was the same tonal value, all you would end up with is just lines on there and a block of color or block of tone put on there. It'd look extremely flat. It wouldn't have any of that punchiness that people joke about me referring to my artwork and images. I like them punchy and that's what it means. A really wide range, a really wide tonal range. A punchy or a high contrast image really has the full range of something really really light all the way to something really dark. An image and a drawing that I've done recently was uh, of Tony Stark and you can see that even when we zoom in here we've got really light areas to pure white and almost pure white to extremely dark areas as well so that's one of those high contrast images, images that I prefer to work from. So let's briefly take a look at tonal range again. So let's look at a reference photo. So here's one I took of a, a pair of, of a giraffe, I almost said zebra then, giraffe at a local wildlife park uh, a couple of years ago. Okay, it's a nice scene. Um, nothing wrong with it. If we're looking at composition, we've got that, the heads up onto the top third, the head on the right hand side is uh, pretty much a third of the way in so you know we've got our rule of thirds and composition is is perfectly fine it's a lovely scene they're interacting okay so it's really good but the problem is the tonal range and i'm going to get into that now but just before that let me say that when you work from printouts you need to get a decent quality printout okay it's no good having a good image on your screen printing it out because you're going to use that as your reference to copy from sometimes and then find it's, it's washed out or it doesn't it's not representing what it looked like on the screen. Now you usually get that if you just use regular uh, printer paper okay the really cheap stuff that you buy in like 500 sheets as a ream that's that's the cheap paper and it doesn't come out with the high contrast or high amount of pigment on there. So you could have a really good image on your screen and then it ends up looking like this, which, which you may think is, is a good image, okay. But the problem is here, the contrast. So if I bring, um, let's get a brush and make it black, just to show you the tonal range. So that's what black looks like on here and that's what pure white looks like on here. So we've got some pure whites on the highlights. That's not a problem. But have we got any blacks? Have we got anything at all even near a black? No. And we know at the very least the blacks in the eyes, the darks in the eyes should be pretty much pure black. Let's get rid of those. So we could make it a bit darker. That looks much better. Okay, so now we've got something that's closer to blue black. Um, let's just put that back on there. But if we bring it up into the giraffe, you can see there's nothing really that black on there still. Now, you don't always have to have the full tonal range on there. Okay, let's go back to our first image that people, someone may have just used this as it is. Okay, but if you go into your levels, and I've discussed this on a video already, so I'm not going to go into this a lot. Image, adjust, levels. You see this kind of a graph. Now, this part on the far left, this little, little uh, triangle, that's your darkest darks all the way over here this triangle that's white that's your lightest lights so you can see that we've actually got um, something there on the lightest lights that's picking up these areas here on top of the head okay so if we grab that and drag it further you can see it's going lighter and lighter and lighter let's concern ourselves more with the dark because that's what's really going wrong here 
So there's the darks. You don't want to go much more than where you see the peak start. And here's the lights. And now when I toggle this on and off, now you can see how that initial image, which may have looked okay, was really, really lacking. Okay, so this kind of a, a bell curve, you want your darkest darks to get near there and your lightest lights to be near where that's peaking up as well. And that's what gives you that different image. That This is what I call a high contrast. This is what I call a punchy image. This is a full tonal range. That's the difference. Now, if you're using cheap paper, you could see this on your screen. And then when you push print, you're going to get that. And then you're going to match your pencils up to this and look at your tonal range and match that up to this. And you're going to get a washed up piece of artwork at the end. So get yourself decent paper. It doesn't need to be the most expensive, but a matte photo paper is really useful. Okay. Or a glossy paper. If you're not troubled by reflections on the glossy paper, that could be even more um, vibrant and punchy and contrasty than a matte paper. Okay. But you need to get your printout to represent it. Or, you know, if you're working from an iPad, to, to use that and get that color and tone just right. So this is about the tone, remember, more than the color, the contrast all the way from lightest light to darkest dark. So what really is the point of all this? Do we need to go to the effort of looking at the tonal range? Well, as you become much more experienced with artwork, drawing, painting, you see the tonal range more easily. Almost like you're looking, you're not really looking through it in black and white, but you can see the tonal range is different than the color. We don't have to be concerned about color when we're thinking about tonal range. And if we get the tonal range accurate, we don't have to be that accurate on the color for it to still look real. Okay, and I can show examples of that. that you can have, you've seen examples probably online with perhaps a zebra where they've done an arty image of it and it may be all really surreal colors. So lots of shocking pinks and blues and any colors, but it still looks like a zebra, albeit an arty version of it. And that's because the tonal range is still correct. We've still got lightness and darkness. So tonal range is separate than colors, okay? So let's think of this color again. Okay, so the color is a fleshy color, like a sandy color. The tonal range is around about a two. So if I've, I've already selected a color, so if I use the paper version of this, you can't really draw you can draw on it but it's not um, really that good a representation of the color as you would get on pan pass on a pastel matte paper because this will hold layers and this is really um, just smudging on the surface it's not giving you a good deposit of opaque pastel so you can do this especially with pastel sticks that will deposit much more to test out your tones but I rather and put some actually on a spare piece of pastel matte paper. Okay, so that's showing that color or that, that color and tone on there. Okay, so if I hold that behind number two, you will see that's slightly darker than number two. It's more like a number three instead. So we've gone, rather than go to that, this is a bit darker. Let me put that right on the edge. Okay, and as you can see, it's a bit darker, so that is correct. So I'd need something a bit lighter than that pencil. And um, I know this one's maybe a bit lighter, a bit pinker. But we're more concerned about tone. So that is a little lighter, but only slightly. So I'd go even lighter than that, okay? 
but you've got to think as well that tone, tonal value, is not the colour. So we can have the same tonal value. So that's a blue, obviously, and that tonal value, that's around about a 2 or 3 as well. So it's the same tonal value as the three different colours there. We've got the same tonal, tonal value. Okay, so that's how you can get an image to still look real and still be slightly or even massively out on your colour. Okay, and this is why I say that tonal value is absolutely the most important part. Okay, so don't have you don't have to worry about getting your colours spot on exactly right. It's much more important to get the tonal value right. Now that's um, I'm going over that a few times because it is that important, and it's also that important because even if we get hundreds of colours of pencils, you're still not going to always match them up perfectly. Okay, so let's move on from colours and let's uh, tonal value, sorry, and let's look at colours. Okay, so let's take a look at colour. This is the part people think is the most important. As I've shown, it's not as important as tonal value. It is still important if you're after um, realism and actually matching colours. So if you're doing pet portraits, that's kind of when it's coming in to be in a lot more important because people know the colours of their pets and they want it matched. Okay, so let's take a look. So here's another printout I've done. I've done it on... Um, it's best to do these on kind of like a thick paper, a matte paper. Okay, I found to get the best colour match or to get a nice um, natural neutral grey, if you go into your printer settings and just put it on normal paper is what I found comes out best rather than a matte paper setting, normal paper and grey scale. So rather than print in colour, print as grey scale comes out like this. What you can do then once again, cut these out, whether you want them smaller or larger, and put some holes in there again. Okay, so this time I've put punch two holes in close together, and I'll show you how I use that. Okay, so it's another tool that helps us to uh, zero in on the colours this time. Where the other one did it on the tone, this one's doing it on the colours. It's taken all the distractions away and you see how easy this is to use. This goes along really, or the easiest way to use this, the quickest way to use it, is to actually, all of your pencils make up colour swatches. Okay, just like that. And I've got them, I didn't do this um, early on when I started using pencils, but it is very, you know, valuable to do something like this. It only takes you an hour or so. I've done it on pastel matte paper because I wanted uh, a mid-tone. This is the colour paper I normally use. You, you know, you're, I can still use other colour papers. Don't worry that you've got to then stick to the same colour paper. But it's mid-tone and being pastel matte means I can get a nice opaque layer of, of the pastel on there. You can see I've got it for all my colours. Okay, and I've got the names down on there as well. So simple as that. Here's some purples I've got with my Pitt and Carbothello. You can see I'm uh, keeping the similar colours together. Okay. So how do we use those? Well, let's say for instance, let's bring that leopard back. And let's zoom in again. Okay, so this time, let's say we want to match this colour. At the beginning of a drawing, painting, I generally pull out the colours similar to this. This allows me then to match up the colours as I'm going to show you, and then go into my sets of pencils or soft pastels or sticks or whatever, it can be coloured pencils, 
okay I can go in there and get the ones out that are closest to matching it now if you've got two or three hundred pencils you could and you know that the colors on the backs of the pencils generally are useless as far as matching up the color that actually comes out so let's take a look at this this Derwent one okay I'll, that's the color that we've actually got with a pencil that's the color on the back doesn't show up that much probably on screen but it is substantially different okay so you can't rely on the color at the back or you can't even rely on the color at the tip either so we need a better way to find those colors okay but if you've got 300 pencils and you're thinking oh that's that's roughly right I'll get them out when you start using them you're either going to be miles off or you're going to have so many pencils out you'll end up with probably 150 of your pencils out to do something like this where you only really need perhaps 30 or 40 so at the beginning of my drawing I'll have these colors pulled out and this is why it's better to do it from a printout I know lots use perhaps iPads or um, phones mobile devices to to look at the colors I think when you get more advanced it's easy to use that method but when you're beginning or novice and if you're finding you're getting really way out with your colors then doing a good quality printout like this is really going to help you especially on colors you may struggle to see okay so let's move that to the side and look again at the leopard and the color we are looking at there to match so what could I do okay so I could get my color swatch I could get just checking this in view get my color matcher by here this just simple little printout that's what I want to get that's the color that I'm after okay so let's zoom in a little bit more again okay hopefully you can see that more easily that's the color we're after I can then use one of my color swatches and just move it okay so say I was miles out say I had my lightish ochre colors here I'm trying it's difficult to try and get it on camera and do it but there you can see way too orangey color and that's not that far off but it's too dark and it's that orangey color again oh that's quite close but color looks right but it's way too dark so the tonal value is way too dark and I can keep going through and you can really easily see now that that's not that far off a little bit rich I could possibly use that bit rich I wonder if I got anything better than that though okay so I can go on here look through a bit too pink oh that's close that's really close and I'd say that's close one of those two I'd say I'll go with that one that's that's turns out to be the closest one I've got okay so it's too dark and it looks a bit too rich as well in color so I look at that color so it's my Karen Dash pencils number 745 okay so I go to my set I get out my Karen Dash 745 pencil you can see it's, it looks quite accurate on the end so if I put some pastel down like that looks accurate doesn't it so if I use this again and get my hand out the way again so we're not going to get any surprises there you know the color swatch we saw it it's accurate but to me it needs to go lighter that's quite obvious so that's the tonal value it needs to go lighter 
and he also needs to be a bit kind of um, more, I can see like a light purpley color in it so if I lightened it with white it would go a bit chalky but I'm thinking like a lightish purple color now I can try this on these this stick okay on this little cut off try it because if it doesn't work I've only lost this if I try this on my drawing at the final stages so this is a light purple color Put some of that in so it's lightening it because it's lighter and it's giving it that bit of a purpley tinge just blend it in like I would be doing on my drawing okay let's try that see if it's a bit more accurate To me, that's really close. That's by far, you know, good enough. So that's how I would adjust the color. So I got it really close with this. I assessed that it needed to go a bit more purpley. Okay, I could have tried a different color and got it wrong, but this, so I added those two together and ended up getting a close match. So I'd keep those out of my set I know all of these kind of colors like that, that that will get it, okay? Now if I needed to go lighter, perhaps, um, let's move that down. If I needed to go lighter again, I may not have anything better still to match than this. And this time I may find that a creamy color along with this pencil will give me the color that I'm after. So that's how you can use the colour matcher to match your colours. Okay, let's have another, another go. So let's look at the eye. The white of the eye, I've pulled the colour out and it's not white at all really. It's just kind of a, a light purple colour. Alright, a real subdued purple colour. So what I'm going to look at, I've looked through my pencils. And I figured, okay, all my purples are way too vibrant. Okay, way too vibrant. Even the lightest ones. And there's a few ways you can get, you know, accurately to this color. So I went to my grays instead. Let's look at the tonal value first. Let's try and get the tone right, because that's the most important part, remember. These are way too dark, too dark, too dark too dark. That's dark but it's got a very grey greenishy look to it. So I'm going through, through, a bit too blue and I get to that and I think okay the tonal value is pretty much there but it's nowhere near um, this pinky purple colour that I want. Okay? But it's nice and neutral and I think I can tint that colour the tone is right. If I get another colour that's tone is pretty much right as well, I can lay that on top or underneath and perhaps get close to this. So that's my one colour, Carbothello 722. So I get that out, Carbothello 722, we keep that nearby. Next I want to get something with that like pinky purple look to it around the colour tone. So I go through these way too dark, way too dark, too pink, too pink and I come down and I think hey that's close. So the tonal value is is too dark, just only slightly and it's a bit too purpley colour but that's alright if we mix it with that light grey, that kind of bluey grey. So let's look at the colour wheel while we've got this there. Okay, so the purple and the blue are on the same area of the colour wheel. So if I mix those two together, nothing crazy is going to happen. Nothing big is going to happen with the colour. We're just tinting it. If we're near colours, so if I have a red and I put a bit of orange to it, or a little bit of magenta to it, it just tints the colour slightly. If we go opposite on the colour wheel, a red and a green, that'll mute it a bit. Okay, so by knowing that the colour that I'm thinking of using, the purple and the grey-blue, yeah, 
and near each other it'll just tint it. So let's see how it works out. Let's start with the grey first. Okay, so a very subdued, muted grey. It would probably work, but I think it'd be a bit dead looking. We need that bit of this purpley colour in there to bring it to life. So let's get rid of this. Okay, so that's the colour we're after. If I put the grey under there, you can see tonal value is quite accurate, but we need to bring that life in there, that bit of purple. We don't want a lot of this. Use your pencil on this side. A little bit like that. And then blend with the finger and see if we're close-ish. So I'll pop it under. So that's our grey paper. And I think that's really, really close again. Okay, so if I was doing this portrait, those two pencils will make that part of the eye for me. Okay, when you combine your colours. And this is what you do a lot when you're doing drawings and paintings. So I may end up with, you know, about, as I said, 30 or 40 colours to do a portrait like this. This also helps then when you have lots of pencils. Because when you combine colours, like, um, say, primaries in oil paints or acrylics or watercolours, you can do things like a primary blue, okay? So let's say I've got a blue there and the primary yellow okay so pretty much a pure blue and a pure yellow when we do that with paints we can mix them together because blue and yellow makes green and this would make a really those two primaries would make a really vibrant green color okay a really vibrant green when we do it with pastels kind of get a green but it's never like a vibrant green like you get with um, paints especially when you're using the pastel pencils because they're not quite as as um, colorful has as much pigment as um, pastel sticks okay so that's why we get lots of colors of pencils plus I don't know if you were like me feels really good to buy lots of pencils I love buying pencils and add into my color collection. So when you've got lots of colors, you can get it really accurate. Use your, your color checker, okay? You can get it really accurate because you've got lots of pencils in your set. And then you can use, as I've shown you, another color on top of another to get the color super accurate, okay? So you want a pencil that's pretty accurate almost there and then you use the other color with it to to tint it to just take it that extra bit to get it that much more accurate again so am i saying you should go out and buy lots and lots of different types of pencils well i'm not saying not to and if that's what you would like to do it's going to be beneficial Okay, so on that example we did there, we put the grey down first. What if I put the purple down first? Could I have got back to it? Well, the reason I didn't want to do that was because if I got a colour down that's super saturated like that, if we compare it to the eye, it's going to take um, more doing to try and knock that back to get it subtle again. I wanted to start with the, the one that was uh, closest to it and more of a neutral colour first and then use the smallest amount of this because it's a, a punchy colour, like I said, a vibrant colour. It's easy to overdo it. So go with the more subtle one first. But can it be done? Can you bring it back? So you may end up with a fair bit of dust doing it that way. 
use a clean finger that's so how I would normally be rubbing it in. You see it's still too purple. So then you could end up having to put lots of the top colour down on there. Still too purple. So use your most colourful colours, your most vibrant colours as the tint. Yeah, as a little tiny bit. It's better to underdo it. Use just a little amount than to overdo it and try to take it off. Okay, so use your subtle ones, the more accurate ones first, use the colour to go on top, to almost glaze onto the surface, to tint that colour. Now as I said with the colour wheel, if you take an opposite it'll mute the colour, okay, but once again it's not the same with pastels as it is with paint. When we add say a red and a green together, we with paint we really subdue it almost to you know um, like a neutral color almost like a brownie kind of color it really subdues it when we do this with pastels so I've got a flesh color down on there and now I'm going to put a green on top okay so that's kind of the opposite it's not far off the opposite on the color wheel when I do that lightly on top it kind of makes the flesh color and the green rather than really subdue it a lot you glaze in more with pastels even if I rub them together I still get that kind of fleshy color green okay so keep that in mind that pastels work more like a glaze so almost like put in um, if you if you think of stained glass windows so or even say cellophane that's coloured you have the colour on top um, the main colour so that's the flesh colour and then perhaps a light green cellophane going on top it kind of merges together but you can still see both colours so it's more like glazing and that's what I did a lot when I was, I was doing this um, portrait and if we look at that area you can see we've got kind of a, a richish flesh color okay so I could combine perhaps those two pencils to get that but then we've got this you see there's lots of greens usually with uh, portraits so that's when I would glaze that color on top or we've got um, kind of a, a purpley color there or a, a bluey color purpley blue I would glaze that on top again and that's how you bring up colors on surface such as this when we do in areas like this okay that's dark but got light on top I've shown how I do these in lots of my videos get an area the first year under layer that's the darker part so if you look in between the highlight haze you can see it's slightly darker in there and it's easier to show this on videos but that's you go slightly darker first and if you've blurred your image like this is blurred you've got that slightly darker already so you can copy your blurred image go for those colors first because it's blurred it'll naturally be that little bit darker and then you can put your highlights on top after so I hope this has helped you with colour and tone. It's a learning process. It takes time, experience and practice. But these are the basics that I've found that really get to improve somebody from a beginner to a novice stage really quickly. Then with the practice you'll get to, to see more colours. You'll see the subtleties in colours and you can apply that to your work. But for those that are frustrated Perhaps you're using your phone all the time to, to draw from or you're using um, your tablet or device or whatever to work from. If you possibly can, try to do a printout and work from that. Remember, it's got to be a good printout. If you must work from a device, use your colour picker and those little things that I showed you with the holes in, you know, that you cut out your colour matcher. Use that against your tablet. It's not going to be perfect because remember, 
devices and tablets are lit from behind so it's different than a printout and that's why a printout is easier to work from but if you are using a tablet use it just like I've shown in this uh, video use it with your tablets to try at least to get the accuracy and that accuracy of color and tone is more important in the early stages once you've got the groundwork in you don't have to keep doing this all of the time when you're adding details on top and only use this as much as you want you don't have to do it and go overboard and get all of your pencils out because you can see all tiny differences you're looking at your basic colors that's why I blur that reference photo at the beginning to look at just the basic colors so I hope that's helped. See you all again on the next video. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well. And those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too. So there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, Hope to see you there soon.